Between Tuesday, October 9th and Thursday, October 11th, the S&P 500 dropped 5.3%, erasing over $1 trillion worth of its market capitalization over the span of just a few days. It's a drop that came out of the blue. There were no flashing red lights, no breaking headlines about a big bankruptcy or market scandal. It just happened. It's a scary occurrence, and it's actually the second one we've seen so far in 2018. Back in February, the S&P 500 tumbled 10.2% over the span of just two weeks. Stranger still, both of these drops occurred when the market was looking pretty good. In February, the S&P 500 had just hit an all-time new high. And just in September, US unemployment hit a 49-year low. So why is it that when things are going so well, we can still lose so much money? Why do markets stumble when they're on a roll? Let's explore this question and more on today's Plain Bagel. When markets fall by at least 10% from their recent high over a short period of time, the event is called a correction. It's a seemingly strange label. A correction infers that something was wrong, but both drops we've seen in 2018 happened when markets were up. Isn't making money a good thing? Well, yes, no one's arguing with you there, but the label is appropriate nonetheless. You see, it's actually typical for a correction to follow a period of enthusiasm and strong growth. During times like these, investors tend to become increasingly optimistic about investments. With people making money off of their stock positions, the stock market draws increasingly more attention. And as such, more money ends up entering the markets. The issue, however, is that the strong demand can inflate stock prices past their actual worth if the underlying growth in company earnings isn't keeping up with expectations. This can cause a stock that is actually only worth $20 to sell for $30, $40, or $50. And if this inflated valuation reaches an unsustainable level, it can come crashing back down. In this way, valuations are much like an elastic band. When things are normal, the valuation has a preferred state. Now, as demand for stocks goes up, valuations are pulled higher. But like the elastic band, the higher the level goes, the more tension there is trying to pull the level back down to its long-term state. And if valuations are pulled too high, well, they can snap back down to a low level very abruptly. Now, it's the rules of physics that drives a rubber band back to its at-rest state. But with stock valuations, this downward pressure comes from active investors. You see, when valuations are higher than normal, active investors may start to sell their stock holdings. Buy low, sell high, right? As these investors sell, they apply downward pressure to stock valuations. And if the wave of selling is big enough, we can end up with a correction. But you may be wondering how the selling of a group of investors can get so big that it leads to a 10% drop in stock markets. After all, there are roughly 177 million individual investors in the US. Are we really suggesting that 5% of the population is going to their account and selling stocks on a given day? Well, yes and no. You see, the stock market is actually a lot more concentrated than you might expect. And the majority of stocks are held by large corporations and funds, not individual investors. In fact, it's estimated that 25.6% of the global equity market is held by active funds and institutional investors, and 57% by governments, pensions, and corporations. So it only takes a few large players, who oftentimes are investing other people's money on their behalf, to make a sell decision for the market to see downward pressure. On top of this, selling from large players can lead to herding, where, like a pack of lemmings, investors copy the actions of others. So the decision of even one large company can have a profound impact on the markets if other investors decide to copy the firm's activity. So that's how a correction occurs. Active investors notice high valuations and start to sell their stock positions, which can trigger a wave of selling from other investors. But why are investors selling right now? Well, many believe that near-term growth expectations are too high, with some believing that trade tensions with China and rising Federal Reserve interest rates are going to slow down the market moving forward. But something that is in the back of most investors' mind is the current long bull market we're in. The bull market, which is defined as a period of sustained positive growth, has been going for a record-breaking nine years. So it's only natural that investor expectations have grown pretty high over this period, over which people have made exceptional returns. And some even speculate that this points to an inevitable bear market waiting around the corner. Is there any merit to that claim? 
well, it's certainly possible we'll see a downturn in the near future, but it's important not to confuse what we've seen this year with the bear market. Bear markets tend to last for many years and often occur when the economy is experiencing a downturn. A correction is very short in duration, often lasting less than two months. So the drops we've seen in 2018 aren't necessarily indicative of a bear market. Regardless of what's causing these drops, however, it can be a scary time to hold on to your stock positions. There's no telling what the future brings, if there will be more corrections, a bear market, or on the other side of things, if there'll be even further growth. So it's important that you stick to your investment strategy and not let your emotions get the better of you. You may feel a gut instinct to sell when things are falling, especially right after a correction, but timing the markets is a dangerous game. If you were to sell after the 10% drop we saw in February, you would have done so at the worst possible time. So hopefully understanding what causes a correction will help steady your hand through any future downturns. And if the volatility of the markets is getting to you, just remember that markets tend to recover from corrections very shortly after they've occurred. I know the prospect of an impending bear market doesn't really help to calm the nerves, but so long as you invest in high quality holdings and maintain a long-term perspective, it's a lot easier to weather any future storms. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to like, and if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe. Hit the bell icon for notifications about future videos. If you have any feedback or topics you want me to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. For The Plain Bagel, my name is Richard Coffin. Thanks for joining me today.